the C minor, C major, and all this come from somewhere. And they're just examples of things within this area of expectation. They're just examples, they're relatively recent examples of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I said that. You were outside the room. <laughs> Okay, yeah, let me explain that. What he's talking about is that I was playing some, some old melodies from TV themes, you know, from, from like the 70s, 60s, and stuff like that. Some old, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, TV things. They, they know something. <laughs> and, um, and, and, um, <laughs> these guys, you have to watch these guys, they, they fight you every morning. Now he said there's TV in Cuba too. Yeah. <laughs> but Jonathan said they only have two stations. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Let's not get to that. The Cuban American War here on stage. All right. Um, that was the point that they were they were uh, you know and Craig is um, was old enough that he remembered a lot of the shows and everything. He was identifying the shows and everything. And and they were like, we don't know any of this, any of these themes. You know, I mean, it were themes from Mash and stuff like that that they never. Heard. That's, that's all. And, um, but that's not quite what I was talking about. That's, that, you know, that's, <laughs> that's not what I meant. That's, that's very specific, you know. But I, I meant something like Western culture or something bigger than that, you know, because, I mean, the thing is, is that we wouldn't be playing together if you didn't have some of these same expectations. If, you, you know what I'm saying? Despite the fact that you don't know the theme to match, you know. <laughs> so, so that's not necessary to be this group, you know. Or, anyway, and Jonathan. Well, you know a lot of it. You know a lot of things. Yeah, he quite a few. It's more of an age thing. See, sometimes it's culture, sometimes it's generation. <laughs> okay, so what I'm what I'm saying is this. Let's let me get too far. About the voice leading thing. What I'm saying is that what are the principles behind voice leading that maybe that are more universal? You know, this is what I'm trying to get to. Because if, if you admit that you can have voice leading with just one voice, and if you admit that you can have voice leading without a preconceived harmony, then there still must be something else there that you call it voice leading. You know, I guess that's, that's what I'm trying to get to. And what I'm trying to discuss is what, what could some of these things be. I'm not looking for a definite answer right now. I'm just trying to start dialogue with this. You know? Yeah. Um, I was going to say that you have one line. Usually what happens is you've got a tone that follows another tone. Mm -hmm. that, that tone that you heard before has some kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. So, in a sense, you're creating a harmony when you have one to follow the other in the environmental mode. Exactly. Right? And that's based on what? That's based on the experience that you go through. Uh, each exactly. Memory. Yeah. 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 See, see, that's a very important thing. You know, because as, as, as things are happening in time, Memory plays a very important role because it, it, it's, it's um, in some form holding the shape of what was. See, time is, this is some deep stuff. I want to say something else when I say stuff right at the last minute. <laughs> this, is some, this is some deep stuff. Time plays a very important role, but how we perceive time, it's, it's, not, it's not time in its absolute form because we don't even know what that is as human beings, but it's how we perceive time. Our memory of what was shapes this harmony. I'm not talking about harmony in the, in the sense of like a piano player playing a three to four note, five note chord or whatever, you know. I'm talking about remembered experiences, you know, within a certain time span that, that you relate in some kind of way. For you to arpeggiate something, you know, obviously by the time you get to the last note, you remember the, you know, if it's a triad, you remember the first two notes, you know, and you remember what they were, and then and because of your training and everything, you associate that with what C major, whatever it is. You see what I'm saying? But the notes are played, like you said, one after the next, in time. So you're, you, you're relying on memory. What if you forgot those first two notes? Obviously, you'd never get to the C major part, you know. You know, you're, rely, you're relying on the, the sound, the, res, the residue information for the sound in your memory, you know, to make, that, to make that adjustment. And all these things are made after they happen. All these decisions are made after they happen. In order for you to have voice leading, um, Especially if you're, if you're the participant in, 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 in um, um, doing, you know, participating in the voice thing and everything, in order for the 
be intentional. There has to be um, something that you're that, that you hope to suggest. Let's put it that way. You know, also, and again, that's based on memory because it's based on you know relationships that you that you remember and all this kind of stuff. You know, but that's very important. But the reason why I'm describing it like this is because you can have voice leading where there isn't any kind of harmony that you have can identify is is involved. You know, harmony is, is not, not really the word I can use. I would rather stray closer to what he was saying in the relationship thing. Because there can be relationships that are don't have names. Like C major, C minor, and stuff like that have names. And, and still, you can have a sense of tonality. And what I'm trying to get to is, is how, how is this possible? Well, if it affects you, it, it still has to, like I said, if you forget what the other notes were, you know, then, then um, and, um, how can I say this? It depends on what you're talking about. You're talking about something that, 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 that is, is, is being suggested or something that's already happened. What, what are you talking about? Both. The, the, I noticed it on, the, on acoustic bass mostly. Mm -hmm. Very different. 
you know, I mean, in Europe there's a certain thing, and in Indonesia there's another, you know, it's very different in terms of what people have chosen to do with them. And that part of it to me is not, is variable, let's put it that way. It's based on, you know, cultural tendencies or whatever, I don't know what it's based on, but it's, it's, it's variable. It's not, it's not something that it had to go that way. Because you see in a lot of different places that it's, and that's one of the things I study when I go to these different places, is that you see that it's gone different ways in different places. But it's the basic, same, the same basic principles are there. And a lot of people have figured this stuff out. You know, this whole thing with the relationship of tones and all this kind of stuff were figured out in a lot of ancient cultures a long time ago, way before Greece, Greek people even did it then, you know. I mean, in Mesopotamia and Egypt and in India and China, you know. A lot of these things were, you know, people knew about these things. But the direction that they took the music in, in terms of the structure of the music and how that was developed, was very different, you know, I mean, at least um, on, on the surface. And yet there's some kind of form of voice leading everywhere. This is, this is the point I wanted to bring out, you know. There's some kind of form of that, whether it's, whether it's melodic voice leading or rhythmic voice leading, there's some kind of form of that everywhere. And this has to do more with general things. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go back to these kind of back. I'm trying to break things down to this kind of general thing and not necessarily, and then build back up to the C minor, C major, or whatever, you know, scales and all that kind of stuff. Because I think that we can, um, and, and this, this helps that this thing is done over a period of time, this workshop, because we'll be able to get a little bit into this, and whereas when we do the two one hour workshops, it's, it's not possible to get into stuff in this kind of depth. You know, because that gives you um, another kind of insight on what, that, what these things are that you're just making assumptions about. Like a major scale, minor scale, you know, major key, minor key, um, you know, whatever, all these kind of things, uh, four, four rhythms, anything. These things are just assumptions and of things that was sort of just handed to you on a platter. And, you know, I'm going to try to get beneath some of that stuff to try to get to, to something else. Because if you do that, if you break stuff down, I was talking about this with Craig the other day, if you break stuff down, a lot of times you can build it back up in different ways. You know, not necessarily the same way that you're expected to, but ways that make solid sense, that, that have a solid foundation and everything, but that make more sense to you for what you're trying to do in whatever your situation is. See, our goal here is not to, is not to, to talk about how to play like us, or whatever that is, you know. The whole point is to try to play like you, you know. But, you know, you gotta find out what you is. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> you know, you gotta find out what that is. And so you have to ask some very basic questions to yourself and, and ask questions about a lot of things that have just sort of been handed to you, especially in school, things tend to be, you know, this is this. You gotta look at that stuff like really hard and say, well, is it, is it really what they say it is or is it something else that's happening? Right. Well, in school, we're, I mean, especially in an environment like this, we're, we're constantly learning the tools you were talking about earlier, you know, arpeggios and triads and scales and everything, um, to complement some of these more fundamental aspects. Like if, if you're talking about what's underneath and whatever, like a, you know, a couple month old baby can sing a melody, you know, you're thinking, you're thinking about things like melody, mm -hmm. and I guess struggling between the relationship between what you know and what's more instinctual. Um, do you think that some progress can be made by looking at how these tools can actually complement these more fundamental things? Like, the example I came up with before of C minor to D minor to E flat minor would be kind of there'd be like a melody on top, which would be the seventh of each one of those chords. So B mm -hmm. flat to C to D flat. And say that's your fundamental melody that anybody could sing, it's only three notes. But you have all of this implied by the triads that complement or by the arpeggios that complement it. Is, is that kind of more what you're saying, finding that relationship between the fundamentals in the sort of instinctual melodic sense that we all have and what we learn in a place like this to compliment them. Well, I'm, I'm, I can't really speak a lot on what you learn in a place like this because I'm not here. But um, I just meant um, the relationship between elements, any elements. And starting off very simple, the relationship between, between one thing and another, you know. And also, what I, what I want to eventually get to is that the principles that are at work in, in music, that for me are the most valuable, they're not really music principles. You know, I mean, there are principles that are working in the, in the universe, you know, principles of polarity, gravity, attraction, and, you know, binding, unbinding, and all this kind of thing. To me, these are the things that are, that are, that are really happening within music, and because we're musicians, we just express it in music. A painter would express it in painting, an architect, and, you know, I mean, these are what I call, like I said, universals. 
they go beyond music per se, you know, and um, just by focusing on, on that a little bit, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that you let, completely let go of what you learn. No, you use what you learn, you know. But by focusing on this a little bit, it gives you a different perspective on what you think you already know. Let's, let's just put it that way, you know. Um, even things that seem like really, really simple, it gives you a different perspective on that. You know, there's a lot of ways of looking at a lot, a lot of different things, and what you're trying, what you're going for is kind of flexibility. You know, um, there's, you, you don't want to have just one way of looking at stuff. You want to have a lot of different ways of looking at stuff because these different ways come into play in different situations. And sometimes tool A is the best tool to use. Another time, another tool is the best tool. You know, you don't, you don't just take a hammer and use it for everything. Sometimes you need a screwdriver. Sometimes you need a wrench. You know, same thing with music. You know, you, you don't want to just have one way of looking at, 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 at things. Even one basic way. I'm not talking about. I'm not even talking about styles and stuff like that because I don't even look at styles. You know, I just look at what what's there. You know, I mean, you usually don't have styles unless somebody's doing a lot of imitation and everything, and there's a lot of after the fact developing and stuff like that. But I'm just talking about in terms of what's there. So just looking at, uh, at at the relationship between things and learning how to hear things in terms of those relationships sort of frees you up. You don't have to worry about calling them something. You know, this or that. I mean, we're gonna work on that in terms of melody, in terms of um, rhythm and stuff like that. But that's, we're kind of speaking two different languages here, but, but as time goes on, they'll start overlapping again. You'll get more of a sense of what I'm talking about, and I'll get more of a sense of what you're talking about. Not you personally, but everybody. And, um, and it, it, it will become clear. But that's, that's, the, that's the main thing I'm talking about. Even when you, and, and another thing I want to say is that it's hard to, to draw a line between what you know and what's instinctual and what's, you know, what's logical. So it's better just to leave all that alone, you know. I mean, you are you, some of the stuff that's you, you don't even know where you got it from, where you picked it up, you know. Don't worry about it. If it's there, you know, just deal with it. Don't, don't worry about, you know, what's natural, what's not natural, what you heard, you heard when you were a baby and all, you know. Don't even, don't even get into that. Just, just go ahead and just deal with whatever's inside you, regardless, you know. You may have picked up something yesterday, you may have picked it up in fetal stage, something like that, you know. Cool, you know, whatever. There's a lot of things that we don't understand about what we are, and we don't know how we're getting information sometimes. There's a lot of metaphysical stuff that's going down, you know, and, and we don't know all about what, what that is, you know, but it's useful. You can still, it can still be used just because it can't be talked about. It's still there, you know. You could be picking up stuff psychically, psychically, you know, we don't know. But nevertheless, if somebody asked me about composition earlier, you know, if, however it comes to you, I don't, I don't worry about it. You know, I don't worry about how it could come in the middle of a eating, it can come in the middle of a basketball game, it can come in the middle of sex, it can come in the middle of anything. And you just, you just, if you can grab it and use it, then use it. Because that's, music is all of that. It's, 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 just, it's just a sonic um, version of, of, of who you are and the group of people you're dealing with. You know, who they are, that's all it is. It only becomes this one thing when you restrict it, you know, and you make it academic and everything. That's when it becomes like, a, you know, when you start defining it and boxing off stuff and saying, well, it's not this, not this. It's got to be this. You know? And when you do that, then it becomes stiffer. You know? But if you open yourself up, you find that there's information everywhere. Flowers, bees, birds, everything. You know? So that's, that's what I want to get to. Voice people. Um, I drift a lot. So you have to watch me. Uh, the, the, um, expectation, um, which every, like, like, like Junior said, is a lot of culture. You, know? uh, um, you get a lot of cultural expectation stuff and everything. But if I just start playing something, and Craig just starts playing with me, I just say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play. And he starts playing. Even if he's playing monophonically, he's not even playing any chords or whatever, you know. Um, the thing is, is that his sense of, 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 of directional, um, let's call it directional playing, in terms of, um, of of things that are suggested that lead you to certain directions, and even in terms of you making suggestions or you directing things yourself, you know. A lot of that comes from how, how you, well, all of it comes from how you're trained and how you practice things and everything. Okay, the more you box yourself in, then the more the, the things that you tend to do will be sort of scripted for you. You know, you're, in other words, your options will be less. That's all I'm saying. If you're one of these people, it's, it's like always thinking chords. You know, which is basically based on a triadic concept or whatever. If, you, if, you, if you're always thinking that, then your options are going to be boxed into that. You follow what I'm saying? 
you know. But you can have all kinds of voice leading. You can have um, rhythmic voice leading. Again, it's something that's based on, like I said, anticipation, expectation, that, that kind of thing. I don't think you can have voice leading without somebody, I don't think the voice leading can have an effect, let's put it this way, on somebody as, as such without some kind of expectation being involved. I don't know, but, but that's, that's how I see it. I don't know how you guys, you know. Um, because it, otherwise it just sounds random to somebody. There's no order there at all. You know. Sorry, what were you going to say? Somebody say something? Can, can you say that again? Right. Probably not. Okay. Let me try it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to help me out. What did I say? Uh, Voice leading can't have an effect without previous expectation. Well, when you say, when you say leading, first of all, in the first place, then you, 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 what are you talking about? Direction. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about some kind of directional thing of some sort. And some kind of structure has to be there for that to happen, right? Even outside of music, some kind of structure has to be there for that to happen. If the other person doesn't share, at least in part, this structure, you know, then it's either going to have a random effect on them or it's going to have a, I think they, it's possible they could be inside of another kind of paradigm, you know? And then they're hearing, you, you know, you may be intending one thing, but they're hearing it in a whole other way. You know, this, this happens all the time, right? So they're picking it up in a different, different way, and they're imposing their thing on, on this. A lot of this is subconscious, you know, but, but it's, it's still going down. You, you follow what I'm saying? If I, if I go, um, you know, everybody can, can hear in their head the response to that. That's just, that's just, who's the thing? Who's the dog? How? Come on, what's the thing? Yeah, there you go, somebody got it. Yeah, that's just, that's, just, that's just some knee jerk stuff, right? You've heard some, huh? Yeah, you just heard some stuff over and over, and, and, and that's, that's all it is, you know? And even in Cuba, you knew, right? <laughs> this time, right? Spot, ba 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 you know? Yeah, you know. Okay. <laughs> so, no, I said that because we had this argument last night, but there are some things that are common, you know? Okay, so some things that are so, just, that are, that are so widespread within the culture, that, you know, I can go to Brazil and, you know, a person could not even, you know, speak the same language I'm speaking of, I could do that and they can come up with a response. Not because they're a musician or anything, just because they feel little kids can do that, you know. Um, there's things that little kids, you know, I, I go around the world, one of the things I hear all around the world in, in a lot of different cultures is, nah, 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 thing. I hear this everywhere, you know, in, in places that I don't expect to hear it, you know, and I find myself wondering, now, how did this thing, you know, what is this? And how is it, okay, I don't want to get into it, but, you know, but it's, it's just, there's certain things like that, that sort of, I, I, you try to get to the bottom of them and see, well, why? Um, spally, I bop, spally, I bop, bally, I bop, bop. Dum, dum. Huh? Dum, dum. How do you guys? Bop, bop. Right, you know, see? Now, that's the same thing as bop, bop, yada, but it's a little bit more specific. The bop, bop, yada thing, I don't even have to put any pictures to that. You still hear what it is. Like, a cock, yada, whatever, you know? And you can still hear the thing. But this thing, you have to sort of know a little bit about this thing to get a response, right? But I knew somebody would know it in here, you know, besides you guys, you know, or whatever. And when I'm playing with some guys, there's basically, there's a lot of this kind of stuff, but a lot of it, you know. I mean, that's, in fact, that's how this group operates, you know. There are these things, but getting more particular and more specific, and there's a lot of them. And that's how we're able to function. Out, even outside of the composition thing. In other words, I can just start playing, it doesn't have to be any compositions or anything, and all this, this kinds of thing come to bear on us being able to play, you know. So you are playing in cultural context? Sure, of course. We're living in cultural context. Sure. Well, what, right. You thought I was outside of culture? <laughs> well, no, but I mean, you're, you're saying a lot of different, um, attention being paid to a lot of different things, instinct, language, cultural context. All the stuff that humans have developed have been developed in a cultural context, as far as I was now. You know, I mean, especially when they develop collectively, you know, they've been developed in some kind of culture. I mean, you can't escape it. Unless you never lived with anybody anywhere, you know. And then it's going to be, I don't know, wolves or whatever you happen to be dealing with, you know. I mean, it's going to be that kind of context, you know. But you're going to be affected by your environment, you know. And, and, and that's going to be, and come, especially in this situation. You know, living in in in, um, in these cities and stuff like that. You know, but I mean, it would be any, no matter what. You know, I, I don't know too many people who grew up away from everybody. You know, I mean, I don't know, I don't know anybody like that. I don't know one person like that. 
everybody grew up somewhere, in some situation, with a bunch of people, you know, no matter what it was. And, and, and that comes to bear, you know. We couldn't even talk if it wasn't for that. We wouldn't even be able to, you know, right? Yeah, right, no, 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 yeah, all I was saying was that... Um, and then inside the culture, there's cultures, you know. Yeah, that's, that, I think that has more to do with my yeah. question. Because I'm confused as to maybe the, the difference between vocabulary and, and what, sort of the culture. I mean, one thing I would say is right away, I mean, with, with, with Steve talking about breaking things down, the component part, he's talking about finding things, but what, where, you're, where you're laying your foundation is actually really culturally derived. If you're going to say C minor, you're loading it. Diatonicism, you're loading it with a lot of culture. That's not universal at all. Completely not. Sure. It's a construct. So you're just, I mean, he's just saying, well, there's pieces below that. The building yeah. blocks are sure. underneath that. C minor is really specific to a culture right. at a time. Yeah, yeah, I was just wondering, like, like melody being being one of the, like, like um, completely un culturally unaffected melody being under that, something like that. Well, melody, um, you know, what one person calls a melody, another person might not, you know, from a different place. You know what I'm saying? I mean, um, um, it's, it's one of those things that it's just a word, you know, and so these words have definitions and different people give different definitions to these words, right? I mean, what one person, I mean, even, even harmony, you know, I mean, that's why I tend to like, melody, I don't know, you know, you have to go back to melos, the, the, the Greek word that it comes from, you know which has nothing to do with what people call melody today, you know. And harmony just simply means agreement. You know, but what's that? You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, who's agreement? You know, there's, you know, what one person thinks is harmonious, you know, the first Europeans, when they went to Africa, they thought they were just making noise on these drums and stuff like that. Literally, just noise. They said, well, it's just a, it's just a cacophony of sounds. You know, well, it was very organized to the people doing it, you know. And I'm sure if they had bought some, you know, Schubert with them or whatever and played it, you know, that for these people, that might have been noise, you know. But it, it, this is, these, are just, these are just cultural things. Um, but uh, the thing about this culture is that it's dominated by the European um, um, paradigm. That's the dominant, you know, I mean, because that's the culture that's conquered. You know, that's the, that's the dominant thing, you know. So mainly all the words we use, even the language itself and everything, is dominated with suppositions from that paradigm, including the term melody. You know, when we use that, you know, it's mainly coming out of that, and then it's like, how close does this come to that? that we can call it that, or whatever. As far as I'm concerned, everything he's playing on drums is a melody, in, in my definition of melody, you know, but it may not.